All right, we're starting to get into some problems. It might be a little, uh, a little fun for us, right? So what I have here is f of x equals x to the sixth minus 4 times x to the fourth minus 9 times x squared plus 36. All right, so when looking at a problem like this, to determine the end behavior, again, we need to look at the degree, which we determine as 6. And then we look at the leading coefficient, which is a positive 1. So since we have an even degree and a positive leading coefficient, we know that the end behavior is going to rise left and rise right. Now to find the zeros, we're going to have a little bit more issue with that. So we're going to set our output value equal to 0. And then we rewrite x to the 6 minus 4x to the 4th minus 9x squared plus 36. All right. So now I need to find the value of x, or find the value of x that makes this equation true. And I notice I have a lot of values of x, and I cannot combine any of them. Um, nor can I factor any of them out, because this term 36 doesn't contain an x. So then I look, is there anything that all of them share? And I'm stumped. So I look at this and say, all right, well, how can I solve this? And usually it's going to be something by factoring. And what happens? How do we factor when we have four terms? Well, when we factor using four terms, we like to use the grouping method. By using the grouping method, what I'm going to do is I'm going to group the first two terms and the last two terms. Then what I do is I look to factor the GCF out of, out of each one of these groupings. So by grouping the first two terms, I say, all right, what does x to the 6 minus 4x to the 4th have in common? Well, I can factor out an x to the 4th out of each one of those, leaving me with an x squared minus 4. Then over here, I say, all right, what does a negative 9x squared plus 36 share in common? Well, again, I can factor out a negative 9, leave me with x squared minus 4. Now, to complete this yet, because I can't use zero product property because this isn't a product yet. This is a product minus another product. So I need to factor again out the GCF to produce a product. So therefore, I have 0 equals x squared minus 4, which is your common factor, times x to the fourth minus 9. Whew, now I have a product equal to 0. So now I can apply the 0 product property. So I can say x squared minus 4 equals 0, and x to the fourth minus 9 equals 0. All right. So now what I can do is, again, I can still factor this out. I can break this up even further. I notice that this is a difference of two squares. And here, I can just solve using the square root method. So I'll add 4 to both sides. I get x squared equals. Um, positive 4, take the square root, take the square root, x equals plus or minus 2. Here, this is a difference of two squares. I, can't, I could take the fourth root and see what it's going to determine. But when I look at this, if I factor this out, I can break this up into x squared minus 3 times x squared plus 3 equals 0. Right? Yeah. So now, because if I, if I multiply this all out, I'm going to get x to the fourth minus 9. Now I can apply zero product property again, and I get x squared minus 3 equals 0, and x squared plus 3 equals 0. So now by solving for my x, I get x squared equals positive 3. Take the root, take the root. x equals plus or minus the square root of 3. Over here, when I subtract a negative 3, I'm now going to have to take the square root of a negative number, which is impossible under our real number system. So I'll show you what the imaginary will be, but we're not going to talk about um, imaginary numbers um, in this unit, but just so you know it. But what we like to allow to say is just it does not exist. So therefore, I have two zeros, x equals plus or minus 2, and x equals plus or minus the square root of 3. Um, we now go back over to our factors and determine you know, what is the multiplicity. And remember, when looking at the multiplicity, we're not looking at the we're not looking at the power inside the factor, but the powers outside the factors. And you can see that these powers all have are all powers of 1. So these are all zeros with a multiplicity of 1. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you determine your end behavior, zeros, and the multiplicity of your zeros. Thanks.